We read from Job 38, verses 4 through 11. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it brake forth, as if it had issued out of the womb, when I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it? And brake up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. The expressions of this passage from Job are full of meaning for us. We understand the language here to describe the creative processes which prepare the earth for man's habitation. Verse 9 has special significance to our subject. It also reminds us of another important passage of Scripture found in Proverbs 8, verse 28. He established the clouds above. He strengthened the fountains of the deep. A careful study of these verses, together with the Genesis account, reveals to us a consistent picture of creation and the flood. We continue our reading in Genesis 7, verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. This verse brings several questions to mind. What is the great deep mentioned here? We answer that this great deep is the same one mentioned in Genesis 8:2. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. This concept is also found in Genesis 1:2. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Based on suggestions in the Harvest message, we believe that the face of the deep is the same as the face of the waters. The words fountain and deep do not accurately convey the sense of the Hebrew in this context. These English words carry with them the sense of direction fountains tend to go up. A deep tends to be something beneath us. However, the Genesis account is speaking of the creative processes from a much larger perspective involving more than just our planet Earth. The terms up and down have no significance in outer space. The word fountain in the Hebrew simply signifies a source of water. The word deep is from Strong's 8415 in the Hebrew, meaning an abyss in the sense of a surging mass of water. This word is derived from Strong's 1949 in the Hebrew, meaning to make an uproar or to agitate greatly. As we look deeper into the creation account, how appropriate we find the usage of this word to be. It was the power of God moving upon the face of this surging mass of water that initiated the ordering of earth for mankind. Another question remains, where was this great deep? A careful analysis of the facts demonstrates clearly that the only possible place was beyond the atmosphere of the earth. Some have suggested that the fountains of the great deep refer to subterranean chambers filled with water. However, this would have been an impossibility on the first creative day. The earth was initially too hot to support any form of liquid water, neither on the surface nor beneath the surface. This thought is confirmed in the photodrama of creation, page 2. Quote, in the beginning the earth was, without form and void, shapeless, empty. There were neither mountains nor valleys, trees nor shrubs, rivers nor oceans, but the earth was." 
End of quotation. We read again from the photodrama of creation, page 16. Quote, the fountains of the great deep, canopy, were broken up. End of quotation. This clearly shows that the term great deep refers to the canopy that enveloped the earth, lingering until the days of Noah, when the last remnants of that canopy collapsed upon the earth. The breaking up of the canopy occurred in a very literal way. We understand this was not liquid water, but frozen water. Certain natural forces caused this great ice canopy to be broken up. This process began on the first creative day. Recent scientific discoveries continue to support this scriptural view of creation and the flood. Within the last few decades, a remarkable discovery has been made concerning our solar system. Billions of miles away, far beyond the orbit of Pluto, lies a mysterious object called the Oort cloud. This immense cloud is composed entirely of dirty ice. It is in fact an ice canopy, very similar to the one that originally surrounded the Earth. But how did it form? Many theories have been suggested, but scientists must confess that they do not know. Our understanding of the Genesis account suggests a reasonable theory. When the white-hot mass that constituted our solar system was in its infancy, the intense heat and combustion caused huge quantities of water vapor to be expelled into the outer regions beyond the planets. There in the super-cold realms of empty space, this water vapor condensed into a huge ice canopy that still exist to this day. The density of this ice is such that it does not prevent our ability to see beyond to other stars and galaxies. The same concept was true before the flood of Noah's day. These ice canopies do not obstruct the view of other heavenly bodies completely. However, they do alter that view. From time to time, external forces cause disruptions in the Oort cloud, sending huge chunks of ice into an elliptical orbit around our sun. This is the source of our long-term comets. We mention this discovery to show that the concept of an ice canopy, as taught in the Harvest Message, is supported by recent scientific discoveries. What surrounded the Earth was very similar, but on a much smaller scale. The ice canopy around Earth would have been only a short distance removed from our upper atmosphere. Another interesting discovery has been made in just the past few years. A phenomenon called blue ice was seen for the first time in recent human history in the late 1880s. This was supposedly caused by a huge volcanic eruption. The incident passed, the clouds dissipated, and no further thought was given to the subject for over a hundred years. Scientific research on the International Space Station and recent space shuttle missions, especially in the last five years, reveals that clouds of blue ice have begun forming spontaneously over huge regions of the southern hemisphere. These ice clouds exist at altitudes of nearly 60 miles. Global warming is considered the most likely culprit. If the growth of these blue ice clouds should ever expand into the northern hemisphere, it would interfere with the launch of objects into outer space. But more importantly, from our perspective, it may be a recreation of the original ice canopy on a smaller scale. We mention this discovery to show another possible natural mechanism in the formation of ice canopies. Also, the possibility exists that such an ice canopy, coupled with other elements of global warming and other factors, may cause great moderation in Earth's climate setting the stage for changes that are necessary to the full establishment of the earthly kingdom.